In the previous video, we talked about the espresso idling resource, and also in that video, I'll, I'll throw up a thumbnail to this video, by the way, if you haven't um, haven't been watching the course or haven't seen that video. Um, so that was, that was the previous video, and in that previous video, I talked about a sort of random espresso bug that I can't figure out why it happens, but I know how to work around it. So in this video, I'm going to be showcasing that espresso bug and how to work around it. And I'm also posing a question to you, if you've ever encountered something like this, please share because I'm really confused. I think I know maybe why it's happening, but I'm not 100% sure. And I haven't found a lot of information out there on, on the internet, on the old Google's Google machine. So, um, so let me know. So in the previous video, again, we, we showcased the espresso idling resource. And I'll just kind of show you uh, really quickly for those of you who didn't watch that video. So let's go into movie list fragments. Here I have uh, a get data function, which is getting some data from the from uh, a uh, singleton object in this project. So it's a it's a local data source. I'm not actually doing a network request, but I'm simulating a network to request. So we have like this fake network delay happening here. As soon as that de delay is complete, then we just set some information to the recycler view. So we're using the espresso idling resource to increment and then de-increment when that data is retrieved. So it's a just a fake retrieval of data that's all it is so the test here we have a bunch of ui tests i'll go into movie list fragment tests we have a just a bunch of tests basically testing the app that i had here on the screen we have a detail fragment we have a list of star actors we have directors uh, what you see here isn't necessarily important just know that we have a fragment with a recycler view if you click on any of these list items there's a detail fragment um, that's basically all you need to know and there's a fake network delay that's all you need to know so, um, so what is this, what is this bug? So it's kind of, it's very strange. It's basically a random failure and you can see that I just had a failure there. So if I run the tests that we, that we created in the previous video, the exact same tests, basically if I run them over and over and over again, eventually I get a random failure, which you can see right here. So what I'm going to do in front of you is I'm just going to run these tests and I'm going to fast forward the video until I get a failure and I'll show you this this random failure issue. Oh, first one. Okay, there you go. So we have, so again, last last video, I showed you that the test passed, everything is good. And in, in most cases, probably 80% of the time, the, te the tests do pass, but then you get kind of this random failure. And it's always the first test. It doesn't matter what the order is, it's always the first test. And the, the errors are always different. Sometimes it says no uh, views found in the hierarchy. Sometimes it says something related to process death. One time it said couldn't do a click. It's it's it seems totally random. Uh, it's very strange. So what I think it is, uh, my 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 suspicion is that it's related to the like low memory conditions. So you can see here um, one difference from the end of the previous video to this video right here is I have a whole bunch of stuff open. I have Google Maps open. I have pictures open. I have Gmail open. And then here's the app that's being tested. So before I had nothing open and at the end of the previous video, I had absolutely nothing open. The test passed the first time everything was good. So I think, I think what it is, is under low memory conditions, when the tests are running, um, it, the first test that runs, maybe because it requires extra resources to boot up the test, like to initially start the test, maybe that first one uh, fails because of that. I think that's why, because when you see the solution, you'll you'll also probably agree with me. So how can we how can we solve this or how can we work around this so-called issue? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to you can see from the test here. I'll actually show you the first one that's running is nav directors fragment validate directors list. So if you scroll down, that is uh, this one right here. But again, it doesn't matter. Like if this one was first, that one would fail. If this one would first was first, that one would fail. If this one was first, that one would fail. The one that doesn't fail, no matter what, if it goes first, is this one so and if and if you take a look at this test it's very simple it's basically just booting up the view is the recycler view there is the progress bar hidden that's all it's doing it's saying it's not doing any clicks it's not scrolling the recycler view it's not clicking going back it's not doing anything really other than just looking to see if it's in view so i think that's the key right there and i think that's why it's the first one that always fails uh, because under maybe, maybe, you know, this is my theory under low memory conditions, um, if a test has to do too much because of the overhead of starting the test up, 
um, it can randomly fail with some weird errors. So what you want to do, I think, and what has shown uh, I've seen success doing is the first test you run is one that doesn't require a lot of resources. That way it gives the test, it gives kind of the whole testing process uh, extra resources when it's first starting. So what we can do is I'm going to write an A and do underscore here because tests are run alphabetically if you tell them to. So that guarantees that this one is going to be run first. Um, I also need to add a little annotation up here. So fix method order and we need to do um, method sorters, method sorters, and it'll say name ascending. So that guarantees now um, that the test will be run in alphabetical order from A to Z. And now I've put an A in front of this test right here that I want to run first no matter what. So, um, so it should run fine from now on. And I've, I've tested this, like I said in the, in the uh, previous video, I've, I've probably messed around with this random issue for probably four or five hours I because I couldn't see a pattern. I tried, you know, randomly the test would run 10 times in a row and be totally fine. And then on the 11th time it would fail and it would fail with a different error every time. So it was very frustrating to try and nail this down until I just ran. I just started trying random stuff. And um, this is what I came up with. So uh, ensuring that the, a very simple test case goes first and you it seems to work and you won't have like these random failures. So anyway, I'm going to run this and um, I'm going to run this probably 10 times and I'm going to fast forward the video because I don't want to make you sit here and watch me run this 10 times um, because I want to show you that uh, this now uh, should pass every single time. So um, I'll see you at the end of the uh, 10th test run because I'm going to be fast forward forwarding through this. Uh, there's one. There's two. There's three. There's four. There's five. There's six. There's number seven. Number eight. And number 10. All right, so there's 10 times passed in a row. Now, just to prove to you that my theory is pretty sound, I'm going to comment out the fixed method order and I'm going to remove this A and I'm going to now now I'm going to run this as many times as it, as it takes to see a fail. So here's number one. All right, number two. There, boom, there's the fail. So you can see that um, it's it seems completely random. Like I don't I really don't understand. Uh, well, I mean, I kind of understand. So and if you go to the error, this one says no views in hier hierarchy. Yeah, it's just a it's a bullshit error. It's nothing. So again, my theory is that under low memory conditions in the app, it uh, the startup cost of starting the tests becomes too much, so the first test fails. So if you start them in alphabetical order, uh, where a, the first test run is a very, very simple one, just checking the view, it gives it those resources it needs to start up and it seems to be fine. So if this video helped you, um, which it might not help you now, but it might help you somewhere down the road, uh, if you think this video is going to help you and it might help uh, one of your friends or one of your coworkers, definitely uh, link link them to this video because I'm I'm really curious about this. Like I couldn't find a lot of information. I couldn't find any information about this. Some people were saying it has to do with the the clicking of the recycle view. You have to go into the phone settings and change it to like a long click or something. It wasn't able to detect the clicks, but it's not even relate. I tried that. That didn't work. I I tried tons of things. Um, and, and nobody, nowhere on the internet could I find this, this particular kind of description that I've showed you in this video. So if you think this video is going to help you, or if it already did help you, make sure to leave a like and leave a comment. If you want to see anything in particular tested, um, because this is actually part of a, uh, a full length course on my website, by the way, it's a UI testing for beginners course on my website. You can just go to courses and click on UI testing for beginners. It's completely free. You just have to register on my website and you can watch it. It takes 30 seconds to register or you can watch it on YouTube. You can also find it there. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video. In the next one, I'm going to check my notes because I don't remember. In the next one, we're going to work on re uh, debug and release builds. So again, in, in the previous video, the one before this one, we talked about the espresso idling resource and how you have to add the espresso idling resource to your production code. So in here we have the increment and the de increment. I'm going to show you how to create a relate release build that doesn't have this because you don't need this code in your production code and also uh, a debug build. So another version for debugging where it would be present because we do actually need it. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.